Hi, welcome to The Art of Yoga with Cat Justice, and this is month six in my prenatal yoga series. So you're, when you're doing this, you're probably five to six months pregnant. You're probably showing like I am. People are no longer like afraid to ask if you're pregnant. They probably know now. Um, and so there's some special considerations on how to adapt your yoga practice now for the growing belly and the growing baby and to help manage your own health and your own energy level. So we're going to start out today in seated and you might be more comfortable sitting up on a bolster or some folded blankets and I encourage you to have, um, if you don't have yoga bolsters, just bring some yoga blankets, some pillows, um, even couch cushions can sometimes work great, but usually um, for this sequence that we're doing to have um, either like five or six folded blankets or a couple of pillows and some blanket options and I'll show you how we're going to use them as we go. We're going to start out in a comfortable seated position, so cross-legged or you can do a wide V-sit and you're going to close your eyes. With your eyes closed, you're going to just find that natural alignment of your spine, lifting up nice and tall, relaxing shoulders and hips, breathing in and out through your nose. Let your chin drop down slightly, feel that lengthening through the back of the neck. And feeling the breath dropping down into your belly. As the belly grows bigger, it might feel like it's more challenging to get those deeper belly breaths. So just think of softening into it. And then as you breathe from here, we're going to engage the Mula Bandha. So lifting through the pelvic floor. If you imagine your pelvic floor is a sling of muscles from your pubic bone back to your sacrum and your tailbone in the back. And you're just going to imagine that you're going to lift. Make sure you're breathing as you lift. Try to hold for three breaths. And then let it go. And then once again, lift and hold for three breaths. Make sure at the same time you're staying relaxed with the face, the jaw, the shoulders, and let it go. We'll do one more. When you're ready, lift and hold for three breaths. And then let it go. And then we'll do one more round of Mula Bandha. But these are going to be a little bit of stronger contractions of the pelvic floor and quicker. So again, with your eyes open or closed, whatever's more comfortable, find that tall spine, find that nice deep breath. And then from here, you're just going to lift the pelvic floor and hold for a breath and let it go. And just try to feel that more powerful and more strength coming from your root lock as you hold for a breath. And then relaxing. And again, feel free throughout the yoga practice to explore the Mula Bandha. There's certain poses, particularly the standing poses, that a little more support from your pelvic floor can really give your entire core, your whole body, more lift and buoyancy. But from here, let's go ahead and switch the cross of the legs. So if the legs are crossed, take the other foot in front. And then we're going to take gentle little wrist circles. When you're pregnant, your body has a lot more blood volume in it, so a lot more fluid. So the small joints of the body can sometimes get a little swollen or a little stiff and sore, and you can switch direction. So just paying a little bit of attention to our wrists before we start is a nice way of just getting some of that fluid moving. And then relax the hands down. From here, we're going to take a very gentle twist. When I twist, I like to bring my legs into a uh, traditional Sukhasana with the feet right under the knees, but again, you can stay with whatever comfortable cross-legged position feels right to you. As the belly grows bigger, we don't want to do deep twists across the belly, so think for this twist, think from the rib cage up. That's where we're going to be twisting from, so it won't be super deep, but you're going to inhale, grow nice and tall. On an exhale, bring the back of the hand of the um, left hand to the outside of the right knee and take just a little hint of a twist. If taking the hand to the knee feels too deep, you can just bring it to that center point between the legs. That works too. 
because again, we're not doing a super deep twist across the belly, just the rib cage. Sitting tall, soften through the hips, lengthen like that little puppeteer straight through the crown of the head. And then exhale, gently release. We'll take the other side, back of the right hand to the outside of the left knee or to the center. Inhale to lift and exhale, twist just through the rib cage. It takes a lot of core strength to not twist through the belly, so we have to control the twist. So we're working on getting our ribs nice and relaxed and nice and supple, but at the same time we're starting to build that core. You can maybe even feel that from the Mula Bandha. And exhale, gently relax. From here we're going to come up onto hands and knees. If your knees are sensitive, you can always grab a blanket and throw it under your knees. To spread your fingers nice and wide. Make sure that you're not just putting all your weight on your wrists, but you're using the whole palm of the hand. And then from here, we're just going to stretch out behind the knees a little bit. So you can tuck your right toes under and slide the right leg back. Just feel that nice little stretch through your calf, through your Achilles tendon. At the same time, shoulders away from the ears. Feel that length through the crown of the head. Make sure you're breathing. And then from here, we're going to take a little challenge. You're going to lift your left foot up and now give a few little ankle circles for that left ankle. Going to both directions. And then releasing, and we'll take the other side. Left toes tuck and slide the leg back. Once again, just take a breath or two to feel that stretch through the heel cord. And then when you're ready, optional to lift the right foot and take the little ankle circles. Again, kind of working through those smaller joints in the body, helping to improve circulation. I'm already just starting to feel my ankles swell a little bit late in the day, so this is a nice way of preventing some of that swelling at the ankles. And then releasing down. And then from here, we're going to take some rib cage circles. It's going to end up looking a lot like cat and cow, but we just move into it from a different way. So you're going to exhale, bring your ribs to the left and circle them up. And inhale, ribs to the right and arching down. So it's like we exhale, circle to the left, up into cat. Inhale, circle to the right, dropping into cow. Moving at your own pace, follow your breath. So the rib cage ends up circling in, I don't know, clockwise and counterclockwise. It's hard to tell in this position. Circling around to the right. How about that? I guess that's counterclockwise, I think. Confessions of a dyslexic yoga teacher. And then whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, we're going to switch it now. So now you're going to exhale ribs to the right, find that cat. Inhale, ribs to the left, moving into cow. Again, moving at your own pace. It's okay if the elbows move a little bit, but try not to let them bend really deep. Try and keep the elbows relatively straight. You want them unlocked. You don't want to hyperextend the joints. back to center, take the knees wide, and we'll sit back into child's pose. In child's pose, you can put the arms forward, you can fold them under your head, place them at your sides. You're going to breathe into your back, and you want to feel as you inhale, your back expand and open. As you exhale, it will soften back in. Here, go ahead and reach forward, spread your fingers nice and wide, tuck your toes, feel the hips do the work. Inhale to lift up and exhale for downward facing dog. The hips will just gently draw you back. You can always keep your knees bent a little bit if that's more comfortable. Just trying to keep your back straight. From here, we're going to march the feet in place, bending one knee and then the other. And again, keep working through the calves, the ankles, the feet hips. 
And then reaching down through both heels, lift up through your sits bones, and relax the neck and shoulders. Stay present with your breath. Keep the breath moving. On an inhale, lift through the right heel for half down dog. And then exhale, stepping forward into a lunge. For the lunge, you're going to feel that reach through the back heel. And then we're going to do a different kind of lunging twist. Usually in yoga classes, we lift the right hand here and twist. But now we're going to step that right foot out to bring the right hand to the inside. I like to be on the fist rather than the palm of the hand. It feels better on my wrist, but you can decide what works for you. Make sure your right hip isn't jutting out. Keep the hip aligned with the knee. And then you're going to inhale and either take that left hand to your hip or reach it up to the sky. It's not going to be as deep of a twist as you're used to. That's because we're twisting again more through the rib cage, less through the lower back, less through the belly. Breathing here. You can gaze down, forward, or up. Create length in the body. And then exhale, step it back again to downward facing dog. And then we'll take the other side. Inhale the left heel to the sky. And exhale as you step forward. You can automatically just step the foot to the outside of the left hand. And then from there again, make sure that your left hip isn't jutting out. Draw it back. You can balance on the left fist as you inhale. Take the right hand either to the hip or reach it up to the sky. And again, you can look down to the side or up. Think about feeling the length of your whole body from your back heel to the crown of your head. And again, encourage the twist from the rib cage up. Stay connected to the breath. And then exhale, take it back again to downward facing dog. And now we're going to move through some variations in, um, on some different vinyasas. Like if you were in a uh, regular yoga class and they say, now do your vinyasa, do your chaturanga and up dog. Here's some other options for that will better accommodate the belly. So you can inhale, come forward for plank. And then exhale, lower the knees and we'll just do a cat and cow. Inhale for cow. You can do this instead of cobra or up dog. Exhale for cat. And then take it back to child's pose. Variation two from downward facing dog. And inhale for plank. Exhale, lower to sit back on your heels. And inhale to take a seated cobra. Hands come under the shoulders, shoulders roll back and down. Elbows tuck in towards each other lifting and opening the heart and then exhale child's pose variation three from downward facing dog inhale come forward for plank exhale lower knees chest and chin inhale press back up for cow and exhale child's pose that one takes a little more shoulder strength And then option four, sometimes uh, chaturanga and up dog feel comfortable. So option four, I'm not going to demonstrate it because um, the chaturanga and up dog take a lot of technique. So if you have those in your practice, you can explore them and see if they feel comfortable still, because they might. But otherwise, we're going to move back to downward facing dog. From here, inhale, lift your right heel to the sky. And exhale, stepping forward, and we're going to rise up for warrior one, grounding through the back heel, bending through the front knee, and lifting through the arms. Balancing out the weight from the front foot to the back. Find those four corners of your feet pressed down into all four corners equally. And then again, think about your mula bandha. Think about lifting the pelvic floor, lifting the lower abdominals, bring support for the belly, support for the back. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. 
Exhale, step it forward for warrior one on the other side. Bend that front knee until you can just see the big toe to the inside of the knee. Balance your weight on those four corners of each foot. Lift the Mula Bandha, lift the lower belly. Exhale, downward facing dog. You can stay in down dog or take child's pose or move through a vinyasa, such as inhaling plank, exhaling for cat, inhale cow, and exhale downward facing dog. From here, moving into warrior two, we'll inhale with the right leg for down dog splits. Let the hip open, and then exhale, step it forward, and rising up for warrior two. Feet line up, heel to arch. Front knee bends until you can just see the big toe to the inside of the knee. And then from here, inhale, reverse warrior. You might want to shorten your stance if you feel like your hips are starting to get a little unstable. From here, inhale straight through the front leg. You're going to pull back through the hips, stay long through the waist as you exhale for Trikonasana, triangle pose, taking that bottom hand to the leg or to a yoga block if you prefer. Top hand can stay at the hip or it can reach up. You're going to feel that sense of creating length and space from your rib cage to your hip. And then lifting from the side body. Think of lifting to support the belly from the side. Exhale, bend through the front knee, step it back, downward facing dog. Move to the other side, inhale, lift through the leg, open the hip. And exhale, step it forward, warrior two. Inhale, rise it up, shoulders are relaxed. Inhale, reverse warrior. Feel that opening through the side body. Straighten the front leg and exhale, Trikonasana, triangle pose. Left hand to the leg, right hand can be at the hip or it can reach up. Creating length through the side body and lift through the side body. Support the belly. And exhale, hands to the earth, step it back, downward facing dog. And from down dog, once again, moving through a vinyasa of your choice. Inhale, plank. Exhale, I'm going to take the push up, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, cow. And exhale, child's pose. Breathing into the back, let your hips settle. Inhale, rise back up to hands and knees. And now we're gonna take some things that you can do in a yoga class when everyone else is lying on their belly, which you should no longer be doing. We're gonna try some variations on hands and knees. So for a start, you're gonna reach your right leg back, keep the hips level. You can stay there or you can have the option of reaching through the left arm. And you can stay here or here's a nice variation on bow pose. You can reach back, take hold of the foot and lift from here. Exhale, gently release. We'll take the other side. Left leg reaches back, keep the hips level. Don't let that left hip lift. You can stay there, or you can reach through the opposite arm. You can breathe here, or you can reach back for bow. And gently release, take it back to child's pose. And then from here, we're going to roll onto our backs. If as you're on your back doing any of this supine work, you start to feel like your um, heart rate is going up or like you can't get short of breath, you can't breathe as easily, 
Roll onto your side and rest for a couple breaths. You can always um, just join back in when we're ready. We're not doing too much down here. So from here, you're going to bring your feet so they're right under your ankles, arms at your sides, and we're going to play with bridge pose. Curl the tailbone under and vertebra by vertebra, lift up through the hips, reach through the knees. Relax the jaw, lifting just as high as is comfortable. You might not feel comfortable lifting to your full height. That might feel like too deep a stretch on the belly. So just going as far as your body wants to go. At the same time, press your shoulders into the ground. You might even walk them under, interlace. Relax the face, the jaw. And then exhale, gently release and roll back down one vertebra at a time. Once you reach the bottom, hugging the knees into the chest, rocking side to side, you can stay here or you can take a happy baby, taking hold of the outer edges of your knees or the outer edges of your feet. And you're just gonna gently dry your knees down wider than your body towards your outer rib cage. At the same time, you press your lower back into the floor and breathe here. You can sway side to side if that feels good. And then relax. From here, if you've got a bolster or a few folded blankets handy, you're going to place it on the ground underneath your feet. From there, the feet stay on the bolster, the arms are going to open to your sides, and you're going to take your knees over to the left for a twist. With the feet a little propped up, it helps to skip the belly and bring the twist more up into the rib cage. You can gaze to the right, straight up, or to the left, whatever's more comfortable. And again, if it feels like too deep a twist across the belly, ease off, just lift the knees a little higher. And then inhale to come back up, and exhale for the other side. Gazing whatever direction feels most comfortable. Let your shoulders relax into the floor. Feel your breath slow down. And inhale, bring the legs back up, and we're ready for our Shavasana. You might want to stay right here for Shavasana, just taking the knees right onto the bolster and relax back. But again, if lying on your back is no longer comfortable, I've got a great option for a side-lying Shavasana. So this one uses lots of props. You're going to take a folded blanket, folded in kind of this long triangle, so it's not very high, and that's going to go under your waist. You're going to take another bolster for under your top leg, and then another bolster or a series of folded blankets for under your head and your top arm. So the blanket goes under your waist to support the belly. Your bottom arm goes in this little uh, gap in between. Top leg rests on the bolster and then your head and your hand rest here. Wherever you're at though, whether you're on your side or your back, you're going to close your eyes and feel your body melt. As you slow your breath down, you're going to just feel that support coming from the floor and from the bolsters and let your body just soften into that support. particularly softening into the belly and the hips. And with every exhale, you can think of sending that loving kindness energy down into the belly, into the baby to be. Every time you inhale, think of drawing in that life force or that loving kindness and send it to your own body so that you're nourishing both the belly and the baby to be as well as your own body, your own spirit. A 
feel free to stay here as long as you want. You can pause the video and hang out, giving your body that deep rest time that it's probably craving. Whenever you're ready, you can just wiggle fingers and toes. Little circles for the ankles and the wrists. If you're on your back, you can roll to one side. If you're on your side, you can just very gently come back up to seated. Moving any blankets or bolsters aside, if you want to prop back up to sit onto something, feel free. But we're going to come back to that comfortable cross-legged position with the eyes closed. Lifting tall, soften through the shoulders, soften through the belly. And from here with the eyes closed, inhale at the hands, float up overhead, palms to touch. Exhale, thumbs to the forehead for peaceful thoughts, to the mouth for peaceful words, and to the heart for peaceful action. Om Shanti, Namaste. Thank you so much for watching this video, for doing some yoga with me today. And I wish you the best of luck in um, supporting yourself, supporting your pregnancy, and feeling wonderful. Um, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you again. Namaste.